Hello everyone. Our today's discussion is relating to a very interesting topic. Now, as you might already know that Nobel Prizes are announced every year for important fields like physics, chemistry, medicine, economics, as well as Peace Prize, right? But have you ever realized that Indians rarely get it? And it becomes even rarer when I'm talking about Nobel Prizes that Indians might get for fields relating to sciences. So what is the reason behind it? Everything we are going to find out in our today's discussion. Now, let me start this discussion with a shocking fact. You will realize that India hasn't produced a Nobel laureate in science field in almost a century now. Yes, in almost 100 years now, Indian citizen hasn't got a Nobel Peace Prize relating to physics, chemistry or medicine. Now, there are multiple reasons given behind it. One of the most important reasons that people cite behind this India's inability to produce Nobel laureates in science. The reason is that we spend a lot less money as compared to other countries on research. So much so that our total spending on research is less than 1% of our GDP. So highlighting this logic, you might think if we spend more money on research, we might get more Nobel laureates, right? But this answer isn't as straightforward as you might seem. Now, yes, money is one of the big factors, but is it the only factor or is it the most important factor? That is what we are going to find out in our today's discussion. My name is Ankit. You're watching Study IQ IS English. And if you want to download the notes that I will be using in our session, you can go to this particular Telegram channel called as ATS Live and download them. And while you're at it, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel also. So let us understand what are the reasons that actually stifles research in India and by stifling of these research, you can automatically understand Indians are doing groundbreaking research and therefore they are not, their work is not being recognized by the Nobel Foundation by giving them the Nobel Prize. Now, the first crisis that comes to my mind is the leadership of the scientific community. Now, often you will realize that scientific institutions in India, they are run by bureaucrats, bureaucrats or academicians who have a very status quo approach. So these positions, when they are occupied by risk averse administrations and not scientific pioneers, it automatically stifles curiosity. It automatically prevents experimentation from happening, which is very necessary for any scientific research. So these people, they prioritize control over creativity, therefore stifling the amount of research. Now, this also shows that there is an absence of visionary leadership as far as India scientific community is concerned. On the other hand, few decades back, we had pioneer scientists like Homi Bhava, like Vikram Sarabhai, who inspired not just the scientists they work with, but they even continue to inspire many Indians even in 2025. So you can understand the kind of an aura they had, which is absence in form of an adequate leadership in the scientific community. So this was reason number one. Now let us talk about another reason that is the hiring of scientists. Now you need to understand faculties or researchers who are hired in scientific institutions. They also face certain similar kind of social pressures that we all are subjected to in our day to day life because eventually scientists are also humans. Now, what happens when the recruitment process becomes faulty, when it becomes guided by connection, patronage, regional biases, this rather stifles creativity. So when there is absence of transparency and fairness in the hiring process, you'd have a large talent pool of researchers, which is already present in India. But many competent scientists won't be able to hold important academic posts that you need for good research. And institutions, you would understand they would retain people who are mediocre and mediocre people, they would involve themselves in incremental and uninspired research rather than leading groundbreaking research, which is very essential for a qualification to you to get a Nobel Prize. So this is the reason number two. That is the problem with respect to hiring of scientists and academicians. Now let us talk about reason number three. This is absence of creativity, it is promotion of bureaucratic and institutional bottlenecks. Now, what happens that once appointed a young scientist, their time would get wasted in unnecessary things like internal politics in the institutions in administrative struggles. Now, what happens that in access of resources, which is very much essential for promoting scientific research like labs, like funding, like equipments, even students that you can hire, right? They face incessant battles even for access of these important resources. Similarly, these people also face regional 
and disciplinary biases when it comes to collaboration among other institutions, when it comes to promoting innovation. So by the time these researchers gain some kind of stability, their creativity, their creative drive, their ambition, it erodes, it multiplies. Instead of multiplying, it declines. So this is the reason number three, that is absence of creativity, presence of bureaucratic and institutional and infrastructural bottlenecks. Now, let us talk about another thing, which is a very important thing you'll realize. Now, in India, we prefer quantity over quality and this is the same in scientific community also. Because scientific community, your academic success is measured by how many research papers you have published, not the kind of impact you had from those research papers. And therefore, researchers they focus more on publishing numerous papers, they focus more on collecting innumerable award and they focus more on attending these award ceremonies. And it is not their individual fault. It is the system which is rewarding them for higher visibility and conformity instead of taking original research or creating risk, which is very essential for innovation. So those who resist this cycle, they lose funding, they lose recognition, they lose institution support and automatically they would get afraid of all of this because they don't want to get discouraged from the research. So in a way, it is the system which has been designed in such a way that it promotes quantity over quality. And this is one of the key reasons, not just the fourth reason that I told you about. Now, what is the way forward out of this problem? You need to understand. So from this discussion that we had, even if we increase the R&D funding in India by 10 times, it won't lead to higher amount of Nobel Prize because you have not addressed the structure of the problem. What is the structure of the problem? That is the inspiring leadership which is absent today. So what you can do instead, you can hire younger scientists who are between 40 to 50 years of age, who have gotten trained globally, who have who are energetic, who are ambitious in their drive, you can hire them and put them at least half in the leadership's role of essential institutions in India, both government and private institutions who are responsible for groundbreaking research in India. So when you put these younger scientists, ambitious scientists as a head of these important institutions, you could reignite the innovation that happened in India before. So it, this does not mean it has never happened in India. It has happened in India during the times of Homi Baba and Vikram Saraba. And this can happen if you have a similar kind of a people leading the important fields that I talked to you about. Similarly, government's role here is very essential. You need to understand government should not be the patron of research or it should not be the patron of scientific development. It should be the partner of scientific development. So yes, Government has brought in many initiatives like startups, translational or innovation ecosystems. All of them are commendable. But in order to make progress, what you need to understand in addition to policy reform, you also have to promote academic openness. You also have to overhaul or renew your leadership by promoting younger scientists. Therefore, the goal should not be only to increase the scientific funding, which is essential. I doubt I don't doubt that. So it should be to increase scientific funding and at the same time, these should be complemented by providing more autonomy to researchers, by providing more transparency to the hiring process and to promote intergenerational collaboration. That is, you collaborate younger scientists with the experienced scientists and then you'd get the maximum money or maximum research out of your institutions, right? So this was our today's discussion. Now, there is also a practice question that I've created exactly on UPSC pattern. But before that, I have a very important announcement. Now, students who come from humanities background, they often face problems as far as science and technology is concerned in UPSC exam. So one very good way to cover science and technology and not just science and technology, but all the other important subjects is to get yourself enrolled in P2I foundation batches. Now, the word P2I means everything from prelims to mains to interview and every subject that you have to cover will be covered in our batches for GS and CSAT, right? And if you want to take admissions, suppose if you are looking to give exams in 2027, the target year 2027 batches for you. And similar is for the students who are looking to give exams in 2028, they have separate batches. Now, one thing important that you have to keep in mind that the admissions to the November batch would close on 25th of November. So you have to hurry up if you want to join these batches. These batches have already started from yesterday. What you can do before making the payment, I'll tell you a one secret thing, right? If you use this code ATS Live, it will help you fetch maximum discounts, not on just the P2I foundation courses, but also on optional subjects. So choose accordingly, choose wisely, and do not forget if you have to thrive, you have to use the code ATS Live, okay? 
Now, this is the practice question that I've created. It is exactly on the lines of UPSC mains examination. India's limited success in producing Nobel laureates in the sciences reflects deeper structural issues within its research ecosystem rather than just mere inadequacy of funding. So, this question basically summarizes everything that we have discussed. And what you have to do is you have to write a good answer, divide them in three different parts, introduction, body and conclusion, use the material from the site and try to be very structured about your answer okay and you have to make sure to write those within 250 words because UPSC is very strict about the word count okay so before ending the discussion this is where you'd find the notes ATS life do write it if you need any help you can contact me on the same telegram group ATS life and if you have troubles locating it this is the QR code you can scan so we'll see each other again please have a very good day